Hello and welcome back to Russ's Movie Corner. My name is Russ, and as you can see, I am sitting in front of my movie corner. I have my God the Father t-shirt on, and my Gospel of John movie right next to me. And judging by the frame around me, we are back, taking down another atheist. Today, back on the chopping block, is Christy Burke. And her video, Seven Times Paul Contradicted Jesus. Now, when we last left off, um, she was talking about how... Um, Jesus, when he talks to his um, followers in the kind of the Sermon on the Mount, um, where he kind of talks about, um, you know, when they uh, do, um, like, you know, unless your works become, you know, like more of those than the Pharisees, and then she's contrasting that with um what uh paul said in ephesians chapter 2 where he basically says um you know by grace you've been saved through faith not by works lest anyone should boast um and i said well this isn't a contradiction because what she is proposing in that respect is that um, is that she was proposing this sort of um, works-based salvation um, where if you're a good person and you do good things, then Jesus will welcome you into the kingdom of heaven. But that's not how it works. So let me read... Um, let me read chapter 2 of Ephesians okay and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince of power of the air the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we were we all li once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were all dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that anyone may boast, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so, like, literally, she missed the whole point of Jesus' um talks when he was you know doing things because again it's not that it's not that jesus is sitting there and saying oh you know you you have to just do good works all throughout the gospels jesus talks about believing in him okay believing in him for salvation you can't just have salvation by being a good person spiritual brown nosing doesn't get you into heaven that's what i've mentioned many times on this channel and in this series in particular and also through all the rest of the series that i've that i've done on christy burke is spiritual brown nosing doesn't get you into heaven just saying i'm a good person doesn't get you into heaven what gets you into heaven is belief in jesus christ that he died for your sins and repenting of said sins and believing that Jesus was sent by God okay that that's the gift of grace that's what gets us into heaven it's not just doing good things okay and that's something that you know no offense to all my Catholic brothers and sisters out there but again that's something that the Catholics believe in oh you just do a couple good works per day you're good to go that's not how it works folks okay so let's jump back into this and let's continue on with this. Now, of course, Paul makes other statements about works versus faith and, you know, faith without works is dead. And I, again... No, that was James. Okay, here again, she doesn't know her Bible. 
But James was talking to a completely different audience when he mentions um, faith without works is dead. Um, he's he's talking to a completely different audience. So this is James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can, fa can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things they needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. And scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works, when she received the messengers, and sent them out another way, by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Again, this is something that James is actually talking to believers who were basically just sitting around on their duff doing absolutely nothing for the kingdom of God. And he's saying, my guys, just having the faith doesn't mean that you're going to be saved when it comes to the day. You have to do some works because... Jesus didn't say, just believe in me. He said, believe in me, do my commandments, teach them to people, you know, do these things, love one another. He did have some of those commands. But James was saying that, yes, okay, the reason why Paul was saying, okay, that it is by grace you have been saved through faith and not by works, lest anyone should boast, is because there was a notion that the Ephesians were walking around just saying, hey, I did 10 good works today. I'm saved. <laughs> and Paul was like, no, 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 no. You can't just do works. Grace is a gift of God. James was talking to people who have been saved by grace. But they're not doing anything to further the kingdom of heaven. That's the point. Okay? It's not a contradiction. Stop saying it is. The problem comes in when atheists like to say, well, see, Paul says over here, by grace you've been saved through faith, but James says, faith without works is dead. Huh, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. Because they're talking to two completely different audiences about two completely different subjects. And that's the point. Okay? Just because you do works doesn't mean you're going to get into heaven, okay? She's not a Christian. She doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. That much is clear, okay? At least, not the Jesus of the Bible. She believes in some postmodern hippie Jesus who's like, oh, peace and love and works, man. That's not what it is, okay? Yes, as a Christian, you do works, okay? You help the poor, you give to charities, you, you know, you tithe to church, you, you know, you help out your neighbor, you do things like that, okay? It's what we're called to do. But by the same token, just saying, I'm a Christian because I do good things, is not being a Christian. Because you're a Christian because you follow Christ. That's what it means to be a Christ follower. That's what James is talking about. He's saying... He's, he's, he's using Old Testament examples, but he could have just as easily have said, did not Jesus go around and heal the sick and, you know, raise Lazarus from the dead and, you know, give to the poor and do all this stuff. Should we not do likewise? Okay? If we're following in Christ's footsteps, should we not do also? That's the point that James is making. And he makes it by saying, look at Abraham. Okay? 
he went did he not show his faith when he put his son on the altar okay he's talking about the sacrifice of isaac right and the lord said whoa you know good enough i know that your faith is genuine because you were willing to sacrifice everything including your only son the point being okay that that was um that that was the the whole point of god's test of faith of abraham was that Abraham had to go and do the work, not just say, oh, yes, Lord, I believe. He had to show the works as well as the faith. And that's what James is bringing up. Same thing with Rahab the prostitute. Rahab the prostitute was lived in the town of Jericho. Okay, The spies came in, and they were looking around, and she recognized them. She calls them into her house, and she says, hey, I know what you guys are here to do. And you know what? I believe in God, and I don't want to get killed with all the rest of the people here. So if you promise to spare me, I'll show you a back way out so that you guys don't get caught by the city guard. And they said, you know what? You, your family, your house are safe. We will not kill you. And as soon as they went back and they talked to Joshua, Joshua was getting ready to go attack the city. He said, you're going to attack everything but that house right there. That's Rahab's house. You are not to touch it. Okay? And by faith, through her works, she was saved that way because she had faith in God that God would deliver her from the hands of the Israelites. Okay? And the works that she did to show that faith was that she showed the men out a different way out of the city. That's what he's talking about. It's not just about the works. Okay? It's, it's always been about the salvation. And once you're saved, you do good things to show people your faith in God. That's how we show that we're Christians, okay? It's like the song says, they will know we are Christians by our love, okay? They will know we are Christians by our deeds. They will know we are Christians by our actions. That's the whole point. They know it because we're doing the work that God has set for us, okay? Not just sitting around in church, praising God one hour a week, and then going away and not doing anything, okay? Which is exactly what the people that James was writing to were doing. They were just sitting on their hands, not doing anything, and James is saying, you guys think that you're so faithful, yet you're not showing it. You're not demonstrating your faithfulness because you're not doing anything for God. You're not doing any works. You're not helping anyone. What's the example he gives in that passage? If there's a person who needs, you know, clothing and food, do you just tell them, you know, go and be filled and, and be warm, and yet you don't give them anything? That's the point he's trying to make. Their faith isn't genuine faith because they're not acting on said faith. The faith comes from the grace, okay? They go hand in hand. I had to explain this to an atheist in my comment section because when I said, because he was like, well, why should I believe in Jesus? And I said, because it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And then he said, Oh, in James, he says, Faith without works is dead. That's a contradiction. And I said, No, it's not. I said they go hand in hand. Because James is talking to a completely different audience. James is talking to, to believers, Jewish believers, that were doing nothing. And that's the point. Okay? The Ephesians had not accepted the gift of grace, but they were calling themselves Christians and they were walking around and they were talking about, boasting about the good deeds that they were doing. They were walking around. Hey, I did five good deeds today. Oh, you did five? I did six. What? No, I did ten. That's not great. That's not... That's just boasting to boast. And that's not how you're saved. That's what she's talking about, okay? Okay. She's trying to say that Jesus was all peace and love and, you know, oh, just just do these good things and you'll be saved. No, that's ne Jesus never said that. In fact, in the passage that she actually talks about, if we back this up just a tiny bit, and we go back to, so much of his ministry um, if we go back here, okay, so 
it says, if we go back and actually read the passage that that is in Matthew chapter 5, okay, um, because <laughs> honestly, you know, she's taking this out of context, okay, he says, Are we sure this is the right passage? So, basically, he opens with the Beatitudes, okay? And then he says, in verse 13 through 16, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has, lo but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand... And it gives its light to all those in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until it is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes... So this is actually um, 19 and 20. This is not 17 through 20. I mean, she might have read the whole thing. But um, but he says, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, it does sound... Okay, it does sound like Jesus is basically saying, um, you know, like do good things, and you know you will you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But he's not just saying that, okay, because all throughout the Gospels, Jesus talks about being God about believing in him so for instance Matthew chapter 12 um, verses 1 through 8 um, at that time um, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath his disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it they said to him look your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath he said to him have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate bread of the Pharisee of the presence, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor of those um, were, uh, who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law uh, how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what it means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath." Okay, he's basically making himself equal with God in that way. And the thing is, is that that's his whole ministry, is him coming in and saying, look, I'm the one. I come in, I do these things, okay, and I look at this stuff and, you know, and I do these it different... It over and over and over. Um, you know, and I do these different things, okay, so let's... Oh, now, of course, Paul makes other statements about works versus faith and you know faith without works is dead and and as far as i know james was the only one that talked about faith without works is dead but um let me actually let's see here actually let's just do it this way Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. And this one they call it Deeds, and as far as I know, as far as I know, Yeah, James is the only one who talks about faith without deeds. So, yeah, she doesn't know the Bible. That's that's what that boils down to, is that she's ascribing that to Paul, but that's actually James who's writing that. Um, so, yeah, James is the one who is talking about um, how um, uh, faith, um, faith without works or faith without deeds is dead. Um, so, yeah, and I just explained that they're talking to two different people, but they go hand in hand, okay? Where you can't do deeds and call yourself a Christian without being saved by grace. You cannot be saved and not do the things that Christ did. That's the point, okay? And they go hand in hand. I, again, he contradicts himself, but he's... No, he doesn't. Christy, you don't seem to understand that Paul never said that. And it's not a contradiction, because again, it's only a contradiction if you don't understand the context with which it was written. Okay? And that's what she completely fails at, is context. Context, in this case, is everything. Okay? You cannot have one without the other. Alright? So, let's continue on. Um... Today's going to be, uh, I mean, we're probably going to go for a little while longer, but today's going to be a little bit shorter than usual because I have some other things going on today. So, let us continue on. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And I think this theme just occurs over and over and over again throughout Paul's writings. It's all about the resurrection of Jesus, having faith in Jesus, obeying Jesus. It's all about the belief in who Jesus is and what he did and... What the hell is the point of the Bible then? You absolute maroon. What is the point of Jesus coming and dying on the cross if it wasn't for his resurrection? I mean, was it not Jesus? Okay. In fact, let me jump over here. <clears throat> Was it not Jesus who said, Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to it, to them, or after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. <clears throat> okay. Let's jump forward into Mark. And as they were eating, he took the bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank, and they drank all, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Now, let's jump over to Luke. Uh-uh. <clears throat> 
All right, let me see here. And when the hour had and when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks to it, he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you, is the, is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes um, as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another which of them it could be who it was going to do this. Okay? Now, let's jump forward into... John. <sighs> now. Let's do John chapter six first. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Oh, gee, it looks like Jesus is saying, believe in me. <clears throat> so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Oh, gee, it sounds like Jesus is saying, I come down from the heaven to give myself as a ransom for many. Gee, I wonder. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and, you, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, I not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Oh, gee, it sounds like Jesus is saying that he's the way the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Hmm. Gee, isn't that the grace that Paul was talking about? I believe it is. So the Jews grumbled about Him because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does He now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble amongst yourselves. No one can come to Me unless the Father who sent Me draws Him, and I will raise Him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will be taught by and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. But not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God, he has seen the Father. Truly, truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate man ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. He's talking about a sacrifice on the cross. Now listen. Then the Jews, dis <clears throat> the Jews then dis disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 
So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks on my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true, flu true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back to no longer walk with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, a one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Now, <clears throat> we literally just studied this passage, okay? <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Okay. When he had washed their feet and put on outer garments, he resumed his place, and he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to have washed one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I'm telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I, the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. And then he talks about Judas Iscariot. Okay, then, beginning of chapter 14, okay, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not, um, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And then you know the way to where I am going. Thomas, also called Twin, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long? That you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you do not speak on my own, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on the account of the works themselves. Now Jesus is talking about his literal works, not going and doing works. He's just saying, 
look at the works that I have done in the Father's name, all the miracles, the healings, you know, healing blind men, lame men, demon-possessed men. Look at all that stuff that I've done. Is this not, you know, a testament to me? Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me of anything in my name, I will do it. And that's the beginning of the prosperity gospel right there. Okay? They're basically saying, oh, see, Jesus said, you know, you can, you can ask of him anything, so just ask away, just like ask for the big house and ask for this and ask for that. No, he's talking about if you're doing the works of God, when you ask of Jesus, he will grant that to you. That's what he's saying there. Okay. So literally this, this shows me that, that Christy here has never read the Bible. Okay. And I've said this multiple times now. And the reason why I keep bringing this up is because she has no clue what's going on. She has absolutely no idea who Jesus is or what he said. He said multiple times, believe in me, believe in me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, um, John 3, 16, 17, you know, you have to believe in him to be saved. And that's what Paul is doing. That's why he's saying that stuff. It's not because he's just making it up on the spot. And if we don't glorify Jesus as a resurrected person, what the hell are we doing here? Literally. What the hell are we doing here? I'm deadly serious. Okay? As a Christian, ask yourself that question. If not for what the Lord did on the cross... Why would we be here? What's the point of all this? Okay? Jesus' death on the cross means absolutely nothing if it's not paired with the verses that I just read. Okay? Jesus literally told the crowd at the synagogue in Capernaum in John chapter 6, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood to be saved. <laughs> what do you think that means? It's a spiritual teaching. You have to go to Jesus and you have to feed on his, on his flesh and his blood to be clean, to be saved. That's the gift of grace. That's what he did for us on the cross. That was his death. His resurrection means that he conquered death and that we can live with him. That's John 3.16. That's the promise of John 3.16 and 17. Okay? For, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son um, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life because he, did not, because he didn't come to condemn the world. The son did not, he did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him okay that's literally the crux of john 3 16 is jesus came to die on the cross and be resurrected so that we that believe in him can have everlasting life that's the flipping point okay and she missed it completely that much is clear because she's standing there going well paul paul just talks about his resurrection and paul just talks about this duh You'd have to be some kind of an absolute idiot not to understand that. This is literally preschool level Sunday school stuff. Okay? This is like some of the first things they teach you when you're sitting in Sunday school when you're like five years old. Okay? And you're sitting there and they're talking about this Jesus fellow. And they literally tell you, he came and he died on the cross. That's why we have the cross. And he died on the cross to save us from our sins. Literally the reason why he came. I don't understand how she can miss this completely. And still have called herself a Christian. 
Because at least with Sarah Martin, when I did her video, at least Sarah had the good sense to say, well, you know, I mean, I kind of questioned, you know, this part, and, and did God really do this for me, and did this happen? At least she had the good sense to say that, and not what she's talking about, what Christy's talking about here. Because it seems like Christy never really understood what the Bible actually said. And now that she's trying to debunk the Bible, she's completely twisting words. She's putting words in other people's mouth that they didn't even write or say. She's like saying that Jesus never died and rose again, yet Paul's all about his death and resurrection. Like, are you flipping kidding me? Again, you'd know this if you'd read the stinking Bible. And any, any Christian out there in YouTube land, okay, drop a comment below, tag Christy Burke, okay, and say, Christy, you completely missed it. At 13 minutes in, about 13 minutes into your video on seven times Paul contradicted Jesus, you completely missed it. You didn't understand a damn thing. I mean, how can you get this so wrong and call yourself a, quote, former Christian, unquote? Because this, even Catholics believe this. Even, <laughs> dare I say it, even Mormons believe it. Okay? I don't know about Jehovah's Witnesses. They're just a cult. Even, to a limited extent... <laughs> Muslims believe it. Even though they say it wasn't actually Jesus who died on the cross, it was somebody else. And that's wrong, because in other places in the Quran, it actually contradicts that statement that, that they made that basically says, that's the whole thing. There's a David Wood video on that. You can go watch it. Um, but even the Quran says that Jesus died on the cross. So, and even Bart... Airmen, okay, one of the biggest atheist skeptics in the world, who's a Bible scholar, by the way, okay, he's a textual critic, even he says that Jesus lived and died on the cross. Now, he doesn't think he rose again because he's an atheist, but at least he says that Jesus died on the cross. This is a fundamental truth of the Bible. And the fact that she is sitting there going, well, Paul's just harping on this, oh, means that she doesn't even understand that Jesus predicted his death no less than about 20 times through the four Gospels, okay? He kept saying, the Son of Man will be handed over and crucified, and he, on, th on the third day he will rise again. Or, the Son of Man is to be glorified soon. Or, the Son of Man will, must go to Jerusalem soon and die. It's... He said it multiple times. And he also talked about ascending again and rising from the dead. How can you miss this so much? This just is so frustrating to me that she's going to sit there and think, well, you know, Paul just harps on this. For good frickin' reason! <laughs> I mean, come on, Christy! And you call yourself a Christian? I, I don't think you ever were a Christian. Not, not a real, true Christian. I think you just gave it lip service. I think you sat in a pew, you listened to some sermons... And then one day you just decided this isn't for me anymore, and so you deconstructed. Okay? I don't think you ever were a Christian. A true Christian. I don't think you know who Jesus really is. Because you've never read the Bible. That much is clear. Just in the last three series I've done on this woman, okay, it is crystal flipping clear that she has no idea who Jesus is, what the Bible says, and who anyone in the Bible is. Okay? I would be amazed if she could answer, like, 
10 basic Bible questions, okay? And I'm deadly serious about that. I would be amazed if she got all 10 correct. Okay? Because it is clear to me that she has never read the Bible. Ever. And not even now. She's not even reading the Bible. She's just picking certain passages out and then reading them out of context. And then trying to say, Oh, see? See? This this says that he does this and he says he does that. <laughs> no, Christy. All right. One last one and then we'll call it good. That is what saves you. That is your saving grace. Whereas Jesus spent so much of his ministry not saying, Believe in me. He said it very, very few times. He said, "He said, do the will of my Father, which is what I'm telling you, these rules. You know? No. 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 No, Christy. That's not what Jesus said. I just read what Jesus said. Okay? John chapter 6. He literally spent 90% of the chapter talking about you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood to be saved. Literally. What do you think that means? Do you think his death on the cross was just incidental? Oh, pfft, the Romans just handed, you know, the Jews just handed him over to the Romans and Romans said, eh, freaking crucify him. Hell no, Pontius Pilate wanted to let him go. That much is clear. All throughout the Gospels, Jesus talks about what? Believe in the one whom the Father sent. What do you think that means? That means Jesus is the Son of God, A, and B, that he died as a ransom for many. He says that multiple times throughout the Gospels. And I don't have time today to sit down and go through all of them. Okay? And should you want a video where I sit down and talk about all the instances where Jesus talks about that, drop a comment below. I'd be happy to make a video on it. Okay? Again, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a Bible scholar. Okay? But if I'm owning her this hard on what Jesus actually said, that proves she doesn't know what Jesus actually said. And anyone believing in this woman has been deceived by the devil because she is of the devil. And I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying that because the devil has deceived her so hard that now she's making videos where she's claiming Jesus is a liar. And he didn't actually say what he actually said, that he's just talking about works. Oh, well, maybe he said it a couple times. No, Christy! In fact, in multiple instances, in this series alone, I have gone through, from John chapter 5, through John chapter 10, where Jesus literally goes and talks about himself over and over and over again. And again, I don't have time today to go through it and do it again. Okay, but you can go back and you can look at the previous videos just in this series. And I'll go, John chapter 5, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 6, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 7, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 8, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 9, here's what Jesus said. John chapter 10, here's what Jesus said. Literally, every flip in time. Because she seems to think that Jesus was just this postmodern hippie Jesus that just believes in love and tolerance and good works. What the hell? That is not who Jesus is. Not now, not ever. And once again, I'm going to post, right after this video, a poster of that. And I invite you to... In fact, I'm not even going to put it beforehand. I'm going to put it at the beginning. Okay? So if you made it this far, go back to the beginning. In fact, maybe I'll put it at both ends. I'll put it in the beginning and I'll put it at the end. Read it! Understand it! Know who the real Jesus is. Not this phony fakester that people like her are trying to push on us. 
know the real Jesus. The real Jesus. Read the Bible. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of this series so far. And as we say, we will see you on the next one.